For this podcast, we're going to start to look at the structures that are found inside a eukaryotic cell. And remember, the most of these structures are going to be called an organelle. All right, first of all, we're going to talk about what are the two main parts of a eukaryotic cell. Well, the first one, obviously, is the nucleus, because that's the number one feature of a eukaryotic cell. Your nucleus is your control center of the cell. It's the place where all the DNA is going to be found. The second thing is going to be your cytoplasm. The cytoplasm is everything that comes from between the nucleus and the cell membrane. So all this stuff right in here, including the organelles, collectively is the cytoplasm. Uh, the part right here, get the pen up here. And let's move that up. There we go. All right, you see this brown stuff right there? That is called the cytosol. And this is actually the liquid part of the cytoplasm. All right. The uh, when you throw the organelles floating in the cytosol, that is the actual cytoplasm. All right. All right. Let's look at the structure of the nucleus. Number one, the nucleus contains nearly all of the cell's DNA. The other places where you would find DNA would be in the mitochondria or also in a chloroplast if you were a plant cell. Now the nucleus has three parts. The first part is the nuclear envelope, sometimes referred to as the nuclear membrane. And it is dotted with these little holes in here called nuclear pores. And as you can see here, basically it's just a bunch of proteins that have formed a channel to get through here. The nuclear pore acts like a door. And so if you can remember back when we had transcription and translation, during transcription, the mRNA would leave the nucleus through a nuclear pore and head out into the cytoplasm. So here we have a great, great picture of a, of a nuclear envelope. And as you can see here, it is a double membrane structure. One membrane, two membranes, and there is your nuclear pore. The second part is going to be the chromatin. Remember, chromatin is made up of a couple of things. So when you guys hear the word chromatin, you should think of things like, number one, uh, histones, which are small proteins. And then you should remember nucleosomes. Nucleosomes are made up of histones and DNA. All right, so as you can see here, this little circle right here with the two loops of DNA around it, that is a nucleosome. Remember, a nucleosome equals eight histone molecules with two DNA loops. And then it will form a, a coil and then a super coil. And as you can see in here, it wraps inside the nucleus. All right, so let's label this nuclear picture right here. This would be the nuclear envelope. Usually I'll just spell that as an NE, but this time I'll spell it all the way out. See these little channels right there? That would be your nuclear pores. Obviously everything that's yellow in here would be the chromatin, but you see these little pink things that cause, a, like it looks kind of like a skeleton or a scaffolding? That's kind of what it is. All right, It is uh, basically, people call this, the nuclear lamina. Basically, it's just a set of proteins that helps keep the nucleus in shape. And then this dark gray circle right in here, this is the nucleolus. And we'll be getting to that in just a moment. All right, the third part is the nucleolus. And as you can see here again in this picture, everything that you need to see is listed. But what's really important about the nucleolus is this is the place where the ribosomes are made. And if you can't remember what ribosomes do, this is the site of protein synthesis. Right. You can see here all this little wavy stuff right there. That would be the chromatin. The nuclear envelope here is on the outside. This would be your nuclear pore. And then this is your nuclear, or I'm sorry, your nucleolus right here. And so your rRNA and other types of proteins will be assembled into the uh, 
parts of the ribosome, remember a, a large subunit and a small subunit, and they will all leave through one of these nuclear pores. All right, so just review. The nucleus has three parts, the nuclear envelope, the chromatin that's found inside of it, and then finally the uh, or nucleolus. All right, now let's start to look at some of the various organelles. All right, the first organelle we want to look at is the ribosome. And remember, the ribosome is really, really, really important. It is the site where translation occurs. So remember during translation, as you see over here with the rest of this picture, is the mRNA, which is right here, is being read by the ribosome. And then the tRNA, which in this case are these funny looking U-shaped things. And this is where the mRNA code will be translated into your growing polypeptide. All right, so this is a, a picture I believe is extremely similar that we saw in chapter 13. And so ribosomes, remember, are your site of translation. Our next organelle is the endoplasmic reticulum. The endoplasmic reticulum is way too many letters to spell. So most of the time we shorten this as just the ER. This is the cell's internal membrane system. Basically, think of like hallways that are in your school. The hallways are used to move people and materials from one place to another. And that is exactly what the ER does in a cell. It moves materials from one part of the cell to another. Now the ER comes in two different flavors. The first one is smooth. It's called smooth ER because it doesn't have any ribosomes. So the surface looks rather smooth. Um, there's nothing bumpy on it. All right, so what does this booger do? Well, number one is it's going to make lipids. And then the section function is going to be transports lipids. Now, in other cells, they'll contain the enzymes that will break down toxins. So like, for example, your liver cells, which is pretty much your number one filter to get out any kind of toxins and other materials uh, out of your bloodstream, is full of smooth ER. Tons of these things in here to break down any kind of toxins that are in your body. So that's one of the major, major parts of the liver. And so, for example, like people who drink too much, and they get cirrhosis of the liver, basically their liver's worn out because it's been breaking down this alcohol over decades and decades of, of alcoholism, the smooth ER inside those cells has essentially worn out. The second part of, or the second type of ER is called rough ER. And this is called the rough ER because it actually contains the ribosomes. If you notice over here on these pictures, you'll notice how bumpy the texture looks, and that's how it gets its name. Now, it's, it's it has two functions. Number one, let's get different colored in here. Number one is it makes proteins, because it has a ton of ribosomes, therefore it's gonna make a lot of proteins. And then the second thing, which all ERs do, is it transports materials. All right, so function number one would be makes proteins. Function number two would be to transport those proteins. And we're going to find out that the rough ER is very, very important. So if you are a cell that has to make a lot of proteins, for example, the, the cells along your nasal cavity that need to make a lot of mucus, they will have a ton of these endoplasmic reticulums in them. If they are one of these cells that are part of your digestive system, especially cells that are found inside the small intestine that are producing the enzymes to help break down your food, they will have a ton of of rough ERs in them. All right, now, both types of ER are going to package their products into little membrane bubbles that are called vesicles. And these vesicles are very important. They're pretty much shipping containers. So think of like when UPS delivers something to your house, it'll be in a box. Basically, the box that cellular materials are, are, or cellular products are pushed, put in they are going to be called vesicles. All right, so as we can see right here in this picture, this would be your rough ER. Notice you got all the little ribosomes on it to make it nice and bumpy. And then over here where it's not bumpy, that's going to be your smooth ER. Now, as you can see here, in this rough ER, it has produced some 
some vesicles that have a cellular material in it. Could be some form of enzyme or whatever. All right? The next thing it's going to go to is going to be the Golgi complex. And the Golgi complex is pretty much like a uh, um, distribution center. So think of like, uh, you guys ever been up to Garrett, and uh, I believe it's just off of UF6, US6, there's that Walmart distribution center. Think of it as a big, giant warehouse where materials are delivered in, they're mixed around, repackaged, and they're sent out. So as you could just imagine that this is one of the cells that uh, lines your nasal cavity. Inside here are the proteins that are going to be used to make mucus. They go to, Mr. to the Golgi, uh, Golgi complex where it's finally packaged into the finished product of mucus and then it goes to the edge of the cell and now you have mucus that is inside your your navel, nasal navel, your nasal cavity. Alright, our next one will be the Golgi body. And the Golgi body is named after an Italian uh, who discovered this, Camille Golgi. And so you always have to talk in the nice and Italian accent uh, when, you, when, you, when you talk about Mr. Golgi. All right? The easiest way to tell the difference between the Golgi body and the ER is you want to look for these things right here. You see these little channels right there? I know it's kind of hard to see that one. But you notice like they both look like they're stacks of pancakes. But you see where the pancakes are joined together by essentially a skywalk? You don't see those inside the Golgi complex. All right. You will not see that inside the Golgi body or the Golgi apparatus. It goes by all of those names. All right. All right. So what else does this guy do? Well, it does three things. In fact, you know what? I'm just going to write them up over here. Okay. Number one, it modifies materials. These materials that are brought to it by the ER. Number two, it will repackage them. It's going to repackage them into a new um, a transport vesicle. Number three, it's going to ship them back out. Perfect just distribution center. Modify, package, and ship. MPS. So remember, that basically is what it says here. There's the modify, um, and then package and ship is all right there. All right. And remember, Everything always gets repackaged into a uh, into a new vesicle. Now, the one thing I want to let you know is that this is all extremely dynamic. You got membranes that are moving back and forth with each other with the cell membrane, and it, it's 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 really 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 in motion. So if you ever get a chance to go visit a warehouse or a trucking center, you're going to notice that there's people moving, there's boxes moving, trucks are coming in and out, and that's exactly what's going on. With this system. All right, now lysosomes are made by the Golgi body, and they have a couple of functions. And and basically here, let's go back to this. Okay, let's write this down. We want to remember this. Lysosomes are made by the Golgi, and some people refer to them as the cell stomach. I've also heard it referred to as the cell's trash collector or a garbage dump. Whoops, almost misspelled dump. All right, now, here's why both of these make sense. It's going to be used to break down biomolecules used by the cell. And basically what this is, this is code for food. And we can see that over here in this picture. Here's food particles that were engulfed into the cell by a process called endocytosis, which we will get to later in this chapter. It is wrapped inside a vacuole. A vacuole is just a vesicle. It's just bigger. And then these are the lysosomes that was made by the Golgi. And as you can see here, here are some that are budding off of the Golgi. Now, these guys will fuse with the food vacuole. These enzymes will begin to break down this food. Any nutrients will be used by the cell and any waste products will be getting rid of. So just like your di digestive system. Right? The reason that it can be called the um, garbage dump is it will also destroy worn-on organelles. 
So imagine that this was a worn out centriole, or if this was a 